episode, we will be covering hike planning, gingerbread cookie making with Google AI. Yes, that's right. Going on the hike itself, attending the group show opening night at Worth Gallery, and putting the Bruce Trail puzzle together. This hike connects two hikes that I've done in the past. We're going to start at Old Baldy, where we ended a couple of hikes ago, and we are going to end at Eugenia Falls. In April, we started at Campbell's Hill, and we came all the way down, down to the bottom. It's a basically a U, and then we ended back here at Graham's Hill. For this weekend, we're gonna start at Old Baldy. We're going to go the 10 kilometers to Campbell's Hill and continue on to Eugenia to make it a 15 kilometer hike. always cookie season in my opinion and to begin the season I start baking gingerbread cookies. I had a very unusual interaction with Google this time round and happened to capture that on video so please watch my very brief cookie making and let me know what you think of what I caught on camera. gingerbread dough chilled in the fridge, I went about working on a PowerPoint presentation that involved using the song I'll Do It My Way by Frank Sinatra. While I was making the dough, which you can't hear, I was listening to Lana Del Rey, Cigarettes After Sex, Hosier, and that type of genre of music. After I finished the presentation and the dough was ready to be rolled out for uh, cutting the cookies, I asked Google to play music. Instead of starting off with the same type of music that I had been listening to, it started playing a whole bunch of jazz and big band. And about three or four songs into it, as I was thinking to myself, that's interesting that it's playing this music. It was like Google read my mind, and without any prompting, this is what it said. The ads you hear that are played by Google are not based on your activity while you were signed into Google. Instead, they're based on general factors, like the time of day or the city or country you're in. Hmm, I don't believe that. Interesting. After we met up at Eugenia Falls and left a couple of vehicles there, we headed over to the old Baldy parking lot. There is paid parking there, so we did have to download an app and pay for parking that way. And off we went on our 15 kilometer hike. part of the trail is pretty much on top of the escarpment there were lots of great views to take in take a picture of me too I'm pretty. here's justin flowers and daisy <laughs> really i like this area
I love these roots, not for stepping, but they're very beautiful. I feel like this is enchanted. setting up for snow because there looks like that almost looks like a ski hill too over there yeah probably started over there there was a really cool pinnacle rock feature along the way <laughs> there's a pinnacle here but it's tough to see It's already frozen on November 25th. It is pretty. we could see that Beaver Valley was already blowing snow and preparing for the ski season. This is very 
very cool. Not just the Canadian Shield, right? Well, why is it so brick layered? That's like that? that's the way it forms. So conveniently. <laughs> No, this is definitely a giant's cave. Well, well yeah. Look, there's like even weird light things happening here. You see? I think it'd be it's really gorgeous. fun to try and climb up this. Oh, oh yeah, there's holes, so like maybe stick to the path. Hi, Daisy. <laughs> Our fearless leader, Daisy. It's heart shaped? Well, do my heart. Eventually we came to a really steep incline that just seemed to go on and on and on. And parallel to us were these big tubes. When we got to the top we could see that this was uh, part of their water towers for the area. No, not on their bums, like on skis or skateboards or when it's when it's icy here. I can't really have it this Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at the bottom, what you hit, a, a concrete block. I think when they, like, it's obviously illegal to do that too. Yeah. You can hear us talking in the background of seeing some people skateboarding or snowboarding or skiing down these types of water pipes, but please don't do that. Oh, there they are. Is everyone up here? Grandpa, Dustin. Grandpa. Hey, Slippery Rock, what's your step? <laughs> Don't go my way. <laughs> spots believe it or not this is for four people to park <laughs> yeah why not when we got here in april we're like so i backed i backed in and i stayed at the front like i don't want anyone to seal me in how did four vehicles get in there oh yeah they both are the the big one's more modern. So pretty. Look, I love it. Home sweet home. You can see all the silhouettes of the hills. Another cool feature that we came across was the old remnants of a tunnel, so we all stopped there and took a photo. Pretty much right beside the tunnel feature is Eugenia Falls, but you can't see it so much from that angle, so you do have to follow the trail, eventually you get to cross the river, and then you go back along the river on the other side until you can see the falls. Oh, they've got the 
um, pot holes. Yeah. very different than the spring when it was raining and like full. Mist is blowing. I'm in the sun. Yeah, so just go ahead, you'll see the falls. wasn't in its glory being that it was November and this is in comparison to April when it was raining and like a very heavy falls but the view is spectacular nonetheless and you can really get an impression of how big the falls is and because it was frosty there was that beauty of the frosty mist collecting on the bottom rocks and just flowing around the base of the falls. was very interesting. There were some pumpkin sculptures in the window left over from Halloween and some free range chickens. The sky was absolutely incredible on our drive home. It looks like there's an eye peering through the clouds. Do you see it? you'll know that I was working on some watercolors and bark images for an upcoming group show at Worth Gallery in Toronto and I got to finally share the end products at the group show that ran from December 7th to December 24th. purchases of my art at these shows becomes anonymous so if you happen to pick up a piece of my art at Worth Gallery this December please let me know I'd love to see a picture of it hanging in your home if you're in the market for any pieces like this feel free to message me or email me and I would be happy to show you what is available market is always fun and I was lucky enough to have a day off one of the Fridays and meet up with a friend to peruse the market and wares. If you don't know already, I am a huge chocolate fan so when I saw that we could go and have an aero bubble experience, I got pretty excited. Oh my gosh. Okay, you go for it first. Okay, I'm gonna do it and I'm not looking. One, two, three. 
Yeah. It's very small. Looks like a seven, but there's no chance. Three! Nice! <laughs> All right! I'm curious if anyone else got a Bruce Trout puzzle this holiday and have you managed to put your puzzle together? I treated myself to the Bruce Trail puzzle this year and I've been saving it for the winter. I think it's time to open it up. Let's do it together. I learned about this puzzle from a Blue Mountain Bruce Trail member who knew the woman who put this together. So she apparently collected all of these badges, as many as she could find, and put this collage together and then proposed it to the Bruce Trail Society to see if they would be interested in doing this as a puzzle. The badge that I earned on that weekend that I learned about this puzzle is right here. This is the Blue Mountain End to End. By the way, you can order this online like I did and you can pick it up at the store but they're not open on weekends. So actually I didn't realize that and a friend of mine luckily lives in the area and she picked this up for me. Otherwise you do have to pay for shipping but you can also just go into the store, the Bruce Trail store um, in the Dundas area near Hamilton to pick these, this and other items up. As you can see, it says this is a 1,008 piece puzzle, 27 by 19 inches. And I'm not sure really, let's see. I think that the surface that I have the puzzle on should be big enough for this. I really like this box, how it opens like this, not the other kind of puzzle box where the lid lifts off. Oh great, I also love that this bag is a Ziploc bag instead of the kind that you have to open and then your that bag is pretty much over. Now I'm going to start finding the corners and the other edges and start building the frame and then fill in from there. Mm -hmm. 